welcome to Northwoods Renaissance. We're going to give you a disclaimer straight away that perfection is the enemy of good. And we did have a little trouble with this video. Technically, you're going to hear some wind noise, and I've edited it out as much as I can uh, to make it bearable, but there's some key points that unfortunately we just couldn't pass over, so uh, bear with that. And then the second part is that my testing methodology was a, a bit of a failure, as you're going to see. But if you're not opposed to binary triggers, 22 conversion kits, and uh, a bore buddy reliability kit review, so you can see what your options are if you need to make some improvements on the reliability of your uh, CMMG Bravo 22 conversion kit for the trusty AR-15, I think you're going to enjoy the ride. Hello, welcome to Northwoods Renaissance. It's been a while. I'm back here at the Northwoods Range. And in the past, we've done a review on the CMMG 22 conversion kit for AR-15s. And it's got a few hiccups, but generally it's a pretty reliable item and it's fairly space-saving. However, I was recently contacted by Bill from BoreBuddy.com, and he offered to send me a reliability kit to test. So in order to give it a fair shake, we're going to do a control group with as many rounds as it takes to make this uh, aero precision, I think 14.5 inch with pinned and welded muzzle device rifle malfunction with the conversion kit. And then we'll try the reliability kit and see how many rounds it takes to make that. And we'll say, as a caveat, reliably malfunction rather than just, you know, one bad round. See if we can get a couple in a row. So if you look beyond me in the image here, this uh, target up here, that's 10 yards. There's another set of pallets up there that might be a little more difficult to discern. That's 25 yards. And then we've got some steel silhouettes up in the woods that are uh, give or take 50 yards. And those will be the targets I'm shooting at, although I'm not gonna bore you with footage of what might end up being possibly 400 rounds of 22 before this thing malfunctions. So. For sake of clarity, I've freshly cleaned this and the conversion kit. And as an added bonus, I'm going to take a couple shots with some, let's see, what do we got here? Federal American Eagle 556, and we'll test the zero on that at 50 yards. And then we're going to move into 25 yards and do the conversion kit and see if that holds a, at least a close zero. That should be you know, just. A little side project, but not worth doing its own video on, but worth including. So with that, let me go take uh, five shots with the 5.56, five, and then we'll get started on the testing. So I am back from shooting my five test rounds of 5.56. Five, we'll go take a look at that momentarily. And I thought I'd give you guys a little view about of what I'm using to test today. There's the pretty box of American Eagle, which is... Uh, of course, doubled in price in the current day and age. I've got, let's see, what are we looking at? 750 rounds of Blazer. I've got another 2,000 rounds in the house, so we are not going to run out. Here's the rifle, mag pole stock. I think a BCM buffer tube. Uh, standard pistol grip. This you'll like. This is a Franklin Armory BFS three binary trigger. Of course, the conversion kit itself, which if you've seen the first video, you're pretty familiar with. Here's a look at the stuff that Boar Buddy sent me. And uh, we've got some bolt buffers, pack of three. Uh, some increased strength firing pins. Uh, power extractor kit, stiffer spring. And this goes in the charging handle and that's to keep the gas from blowing back in your face. And I have had little pizza, pieces of grit come back at me, so we'll, we'll figure out if this makes a substantial difference or not. You can see this is an older kit that they had sent me earlier. It's got a prototype of that charging handle in it. And then also a plug that goes in the buffer tube. It's kind of a neat concept. And pops in there, and that's going to hold the conversion kit in place more stiffly. So we'll give it all a test. and see how it works out. Should be interesting. Here's a close-up of our 10-inch target. 
and you can see my five round group there. It's one and a half, two inches. I'm not going to measure it. You get the idea. That's about what I expect from that red dot and that rifle and, and the level of care that I put into this. Well, folks, I believe we're ready to get after it. I got my conversion kit here, all cleaned up and ready to go. Installed. Magazines loaded up. Protective hat, sunscreen, mosquito dope, and the classic earplugs that I got in basic training in 1994, because if something works, why change it? So I'm going to unplug you from the lapel mic so that I don't blow out the speaker, and then we'll walk through the first couple magazines, and then I'll sprinkle in some downrange footage too so it doesn't get boring, and then we'll figure out how long it took to get us uh, consistent malfunctions. So there's our results, two to three inches low on a 25 yard target versus maybe one inch low from 50 yards for 5.56. Five, and we'll start with giving the binary trigger a workout and see how that holds up. One. We just crossed 250 rounds, and it occurs to me that maybe I should have bought something a little more economical and unreliable than Blazer, because it's uh, performing like champ. So, moving on. After 1,025 rounds of Blazer, I had zero failures. So that's a great choice to increase the reliability of this uh, conversion kit. Unfortunately, that gave me a big goose egg for what I was trying to accomplish. So I went to Walmart and bought 2,000 rounds of the cheapest stuff I could find. And I've already got a good sign that this is going to be some dirty stuff because the bolt was actually stuck inside the chamber after just 75 rounds so i'm gonna have one of my trusted longtime associates help me out and we'll see how many rounds it takes to get this thing to consistently malfunction with the winchester m22 target and plinking ladies and gentlemen i'm back we shot 500 rounds of our m22 from winchester and I've got my results for you. And uh, unfortunately, these are going to be a little dissatisfying, and you'll see why in a moment. So in the first 150 rounds, we had a failure to extract a clean round. And that was just that the extractor claw was slipping over the edge of the rim, and that's one of the things the kit's intended to fix. So I was hoping we'd be duplicating that. But unfortunately, it was not. 
not the case. At uh, around 375 rounds, we had our first misfire, and at 450, we saw consistently weak ejection. But the problem was that at also around 150 rounds, I noticed a marked decrease in accuracy. And I'm going to show you the target I have here. And if you look, you can see this is was at 10 yards, and we started to have some keyholing. These, by the bullseye, were from a 22 pistol, and the rest are from the conversion kit. There's a couple scratches, but you can see we had some pretty severe keyholing in there. And at 500 rounds, we had to stop the test, not because the weapon consistently jammed, and I pulled the weapon apart and. Let's have a look at the results of what I found in there. Well, let's start with the rifle itself. You can see all that gunk in the flash hider from 1500 rounds shot through it. I didn't bother to clean that. But some of that accumulation is lead from the 22 rounds ping-ponging down the barrel once things got so badly leaded that it degraded accuracy. And then the chamber was so clogged with grit that I couldn't even drop a boar snake down the barrel. It was, the tolerance was that bad, no wonder we had problems. And here we've got the conversion kit. If you look at the tip there, you can see the lead accumulation. So I'm going to have to clean all this out. Tons of carbon. And the breech face is where I've had problems with other kinds of ammo. You'll have such an accumulation here that the, claw, the extractor claw won't want to grab the 22 round because it doesn't quite go into battery correctly. And likewise with the bolt face, once it accumulates too much crap on it, it, just, it seats poorly and then you get crappy extraction. At this point I'm not going to fire a test amount of 22 through the thing because after 1500 rounds it's frankly not fun anymore. And I'm concerned about the M22 letting up the barrel and being a safety hazard again if I go for big numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the reliability kit and we'll see if that has any perceptible effect on function. If it's still a success with the stronger spring and the buffer and all the other accoutrement, I'm going to give it a pass, but I can't give it you know, too enthusiastic thumbs up because I haven't demonstrably proved that it's an improvement. We're going to make sure at least it's not a detriment and possibly that it does have some nice things to offer. You remember earlier when I said that there's all kinds of carbon buildup on this thing, on the muzzle device? Nope. That's actually a cone of lead. <laughs> That's just what was causing the lead to spray back at the table. So we were having some serious keyholing issues with this thing. Let's try and knock it out of there so we can get a better look at it. I finally got everything cleaned up. It cost me one cleaning rod and about a quarter of a bottle of solvent to finally get through that uh, lead fouling in the barrel. It was uh, pretty severe. So we're going to move on and install the reliability kit that I got from Boar Buddy. And we'll start with the least intrusive and difficult to install parts and then we'll uh, proceed to the more difficult ones. We'll start with the buffer pressure plug. And the intention of this is to hold the conversion kit more snugly up against the hind end of the uh, AR-15. It's got a slot in the bottom that slides over the detent and uh, just pushes the buffer back and gives you a little more tension. So you slot it on there and then give her a twist to hold it in place. And it should look like that. Next up, we have a charging handle insert. And you just pop that baby in there, oriented to the rear of the charging handle. That's going to prevent gas from coming down the gas tube, which isn't used because this is, remember, it's just a blowback. And that's going to keep it from coming out of the rear end of it and blowing in your face. And we did have a little bit of debris coming at us, not to include the uh, 
lead that got blasted back off the uh, flash hider. Next up is one of the most simple mods and the one I'm actually the most excited about. It's a extractor spring. And they sent me four of them, two 200% ones and two 500% ones. I'm going to start with the 200% one. And we're not going to cover the 500%. We already know CCI. Uh, Blazer will shoot 1,025 rounds through this. So I'm not going to have time to do a full round of testing, nor do I care to, to find out if this is uh, going to make a big difference with that. The Winchester, that stuff is, will not be shot through here again. And if you've never disassembled the kit or kind of field stripped it, all you got to do is pull the bolt back and pry the fork apart. And there you got your chamber and your breech face and feed ramp. We'll set that aside. We'll let the bolt slide forward. Pull the spring out. That leaves you to drive that pin out and that should free up our extractor. You get the idea. I don't really want, to, I want you to watch me struggle with this. But there's the internals. And there's the uh, spring in there. Pop in the replacement. You guys uh, have a snack or something while I clean that up. Look how easy that was. No problems at all. Next up, for those of you who are 1911 fans, uh, you can buy the Wilson Combat replacement buffer springs and they come with a plastic buffer and this is gonna operate on the same principle as that. It's gonna, in theory, soften up our recoil a little perhaps and reduce some of the noise. And that goes on in the slot back here and has enough room that you can still seat the spring in there for when you reassemble it. So that's what the plastic buffer will look like installed in the back. And without hurting ourselves too badly, let's get this thing reinstalled. Spread the forks out. There we go, our upgraded CMMG 22 conversion. Well, you do what you want. I'm gonna go have some uh, ice cream and think about all the good choices I've made in my life that have brought me to this point. And then we're going to take it out for a test fire tomorrow. And we'll put a couple hundred rounds for, through it and make sure that we, at the very least, haven't degraded function and possibly enhanced. And like I said, I'm most ex excited about the extractor, spring, and the buffer. And before I forget, they did send me some uh, replacement firing pin springs as well. But since I've never had any problem with light strikes, we're just going to Give those a pass for now and save them for a rainy day if that ever becomes a problem. We're back at the Northwoods range. I've got the uh, freshly cleaned rifle. We've got the reliability kit installed and we are ready to give it a new round of testing. I think we're just going to set the criteria of this one at 150 rounds problem free and if we can accomplish that I'm going to call it a success because frankly I've had about enough of shooting 20. So I'm going to unmic so we don't blow out the microphone with the bullet fire and we're off. That's one. We're going to do our final 75 rounds and I've employed my trusted longtime associate Tim and he's going to take us through this problem free.
any way you like them. You overran the bolt. Not a legitimate malfunction. That puts us at 149. I'm going to call it good enough. Up top. So just a few final thoughts. I talked to Will over at Bore Buddy and asked him how he got started making modifications to the 22 conversion kit. And he said that he had had a particularly difficult batch of Arms Core 22. It was waxy and he was having extraction problems. So that started him down the rabbit hole of uh, reliability improvements and quality of life improvements. And that's actually a pretty similar experience to what I had with Walmart's Federal Bulk Pack, the loose, loose rounds of 22. I could get about 200 rounds out of it, and then things would get dirty, and I was having extraction problems. And that was what I was hoping to demonstrate to everybody today, but, well, you know, best laid plans. It all fell apart. In conclusion, we got to shoot a lot. We got to test some new stuff. We got to play around. Got some fun footage. And if any of you guys have some experiences with the Boar Buddy Kit or the CMMG, uh, 22 conversion. I'd be looking forward to hearing from you or any questions about anything you saw today. Oh, and I got new cats too. Check it out. We'll see you later.